Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out the Books Tab Ultra which is billed as an e-paper Android tablet slash PC. It's a rival to the likes of Microsoft Surface Pro and the iPad Pro as well but running full Android and with a more energy efficient e-paper display. So let's whip the Books Tab Ultra on out the box, take you on a full on tour and check out some of the various accessories you can get for it as well and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So inside the Books Tab Ultra box, you get one Books Tab Ultra. And you also get a bonus box containing a USB Type-C charging cable, one stylus pen, and a pokey pin to get your SIM in there. Both the available bundles come with the Books Tab Ultra cover stuffed in there as well. You also get a lovely, if somewhat over-the-top, stylus case to keep that protected on the go, as well as a tote bag and extra tips for that stylus. And if you bung a bit of extra cash at Books, you'll also get the keyboard cover. But more on that bad boy in a bit. And the bundles for the Books Tab Ultra do start at €649 Euros or $599. They certainly ain't cheap. Let's check out the design of the Books Tab Ultra and no real surprises whatsoever if you are a fan of Books and their various e-tablets. What you've got here is a 10.3 inch device with reasonably skinny bezels but you've got a slightly thicker bezel down this left hand side which just makes it more comfortable to clutch. And this bad boy weighs a nat's naughty bit under 500 grams, half a kilo so it's certainly got a decent heft to it. Flip around to the back and the Books Tab Ultra sports a matte finish which does a pretty good job of masking fingerprints and grime. It is only available in this singular colour however which is phantom black, it's actually more of a grey to be honest. It looks pretty smart and I do like the funky design of the magnetic strip here down at the bottom. Certainly a little bit different, helps to break up the otherwise monotony of the rather plain finish. And even though it's a good old size, the Books Tab Ultra is only 6.7 millimeters thick, so certainly skinnier than a lot of rivals. As far as ports and buttons and whatnot go, fairly straightforward stuff here. You've got your Type-C USB charging port down here on the bottom edge, shoved away right in the corner, right next door to that SIM tray. You'll also find a speaker grill down here on the bottom edge and the top edge as well, which is handy if you're holding the Books Tab Ultra like so, you'll get a stereo output. And up at that top edge is also where you'll find the power button and speaking of which let's give that a little poke and get the Books Tab Ultra all set up. The setup process pretty straightforward allows you to customize your Tab Ultra including when it actually chooses to hibernate you can also sort out the gesture control. For some reason it doesn't actually ask you to connect to Wi-Fi in the setup though you'll have to do that manually in the settings once it's done. In here is also where you'll be able to set up your SIM card if you bung one of those buggers in. So when you boot up your Onyx Books Tab Ultra, this is the UI that you're presented with. Pretty simple and straightforward. You certainly wouldn't realize at face value that this is Android it's running. Well, not unless you clock to the Play Store icon right there, of course. Smart ass. Unfortunately, if you dive on into the About Device section of the settings, you will see that the Tab Ultra is running old Android 11. Gah! And it's certainly a shame that it isn't running a more up-to-date version because we're on Android version 13 now. But anyhow, back on the main UI, up here at the top you'll see you've got fast access to your library of books. Got strong support as always here on the Tab Ultra for all kinds of different formats. You can also fast access your notes. These are both Android widgets which can be removed or resized simply by long pressing on them. So let's get rid of the notes one for instance. And then we can add in another one. For some reason these are all shunted away over to the left edge of the page which doesn't look particularly nice. But you've got the usual selection to choose from including a bit of calendar action, clock music controls etc and then the rest of your desktops are taken up with shortcuts to all of your apps this can expand into additional pages of course if you download more apps and then if you swipe to the right what you have here is an additional page of widgets which again can be completely customized including a quick launch bar an even bigger library widget you've got fast access to the store as well and you've got to say the book store isn't the best around certainly it seems to be mostly just loaded with out of copyright really old stuff Great news if you fancy yourself some Chaucer or Shakespeare, but otherwise I'd say just basically download your own books from other sources and then bung them on here. I'm particularly tickled by the humour section here. You've got some Mr. Punch books, very up to date, otherwise De Tall Coffer. Let's get the hell out of here. The apps you have pre-downloaded on here, fairly basic stuff. You've got a web browser, music playback, photo gallery, all that good stuff. You can jump on into that Play Store at any point and download some more stuff. This will of course require signing in with your Google account. And then with that done, you can basically download whatever you want from the App Store as long as it's compatible, which seems to be more stuff to be fair. Just bear in mind that the likes of games obviously aren't designed with e-paper screens in mind. 
You're only limited by the 128 gigs of onboard storage, so quite a respectable amount of space on there. For security, that power button actually has a built-in fingerprint sensor to save you having to enter a password or pin every time you load this thing up. You can set this up nice and easy by jumping into the settings via the handy little shortcut down here, and then dive on into password and security. You are required to set up a pin number before you can set up the fingerprint sensor. And as you can see from this slightly terrifying warning, this model does not support password reset. So make sure you bloody remember it. And then once you've done that, you can add your fingerprint simply by repeatedly tapping the sensor. And now with the Books tab ultra hibernating, all we need to do is tap our finger to that sensor. And as you can see, it bypasses the pin. Now, as mentioned, the Books tab ultra comes bundled with Books's very own stylus. And when the stylus isn't in use, you can just slap it straight onto the right edge of the Tab Ultra where it is magically held in place using the powers of magnets. And as you can see there, it's a fairly strong connection, so hopefully it won't go flying even if you give it a good sharp knock. And it's also a good bit of entertainment to boot. With the stylus, you can create some artistic masterpieces. And one of the benefits of that e-paper screen is the fact that it does actually feel like you are sketching on a bit of paper. You even get the same sound feedback that you would get from the tip of a pencil dragging on a bit of paper. As you can see there, screen perfectly responsive, you get instant feedback. It's a really enjoyable experience. Now if only I had some creative talent. You could also use this stylus to, for instance, annotate any books that you happen to have here on the Tab Ultra. Again, this works absolutely perfectly, no worries whatsoever. Just try your best to resist drawing male genitalia all over your A-level textbooks. And if you're planning on doing a lot of emailing or writing lots of documents on your Books Tab Ultra, well, the on-screen virtual keyboard is fine. It's not super slow, like for instance, typing on some Kindles, etc., but it's not exactly a satisfying experience. So what you'll want to do then is get the keyboard dock for the Books Tab Ultra. Just turn the tablet so it is in landscape mode and snap it onto the little dock section. And then attached to the keyboard, you've got a cover which rises up to meet that back end and just helps to prop it up in place. And this turns your Books Tab Ultra into a makeshift laptop, similar to what you can do with the Microsoft Surface Pro, the iPad Pro, etc. And despite the fact you haven't got much space to work with here, each key is a decent size and separated from its neighbours in a chiclet style fashion. You've got everything on here you could hope for and expect, including cursor keys. My only real complaint is the tiny little single row enter key squished here on the right edge. That and the fact that it is quite a noisy keyboard as well, certainly if you're typing at pace and not, you know, give the old delicate touch. You do have some handy function keys which can be accessed pressing the function button down here, including screen brightness, you've got the likes of the volume controls. But there is no backlight in here, so you will struggle to use this thing in the evenings if you don't have some actual lights on. And while the keyboard dock is attached, you can still slap that stylus up top here, and there's even a handy little flap thing to keep it in place. And when you're completely done, this keyboard dock does act as a makeshift cover just to help keep your device protected, although it does add even more to that weight and a good bit of extra girth as well. So now let's turn our attention to that mighty 10.3 inch e-paper display with its anti-glare finish, so pretty good at keeping visibility high even when you've got direct sunlight reflecting off that screen. And if you do still find you're struggling, just swipe down at the control center and you can boost up the brightness using these little sliders here. And you've got full control over the temperature as well. The lighting seems to be perfectly well balanced, definitely looks like a premium e-paper display and it is well suited to the likes of graphic novels. Got an 1872 by 1404 pixel resolution giving you 227 dpi. So certainly when you are kicking back with a comic book or something with lots of illustrations, you'll find those visuals remain nice and sharp. Plenty of fine detail packed in there. You've actually got four different refresh modes. Jump into the Tab Ultra settings and you can change the refresh rate for all of your installed apps. Your HD modes apps that you find for just reading, you know, your standard textbooks. You've got the balance mode for the likes of email apps. Most apps run apps that you find on fast mode, uh, you know, like some web browser and stuff like that. And then you've got ultra fast when you need that really rapid screen refresh. And yes, if you absolutely must, you can also stream video on the Books Tab Ultra using that ultra fast refresh setting. It's not exactly the best way of taking in a video, not even of my baldy bonts, but you know, it's an option in a pinch. And yeah, you've got that stereo speaker setup that I mentioned before. So let's bump up the volume and see if it's actually any good. Both of these blowers sport Google's fresher Tensor G2 chipset, which offers an incremental improvement over the original. And that's not too shabby, to be fair. Respectable output, not the loudest around. Certainly can't match the likes of an iPad Pro, for instance, but pretty decent overall. Now, running the show here on the Boogs Tab Ultra is one of Qualcomm's Snapdragon chipsets. It is the Snapdragon 662, though, which is a few years old now. 
That seems to do the job absolutely fine, however, here on the Tab Ultra, helped along by the fact you haven't got that instant refresh on the screen anyway. There's always a noticeable pause. Yeah, all my apps seem to run absolutely fine, but web browser and all that stuff, no worries whatsoever. If you want to dive into the social media apps, well, these also run absolutely fine. Pretty fast refresh again. And yes, the video content seems to play absolutely fine. If you are wanting to play a game, though, I would keep it uh, simple. The most basic titles. And don't forget that anything that requires colour, well, that ain't going to work too well. As for the battery life, well, that seems pretty solid here on the Boogs Tab Ultra. You've got a 6,300 milliamp hour capacity cell crammed inside that slender chassis. And so far, I've been using a mixture of features here on the Tab for about two hours or so shooting this video, and it's only down to 88%. So with those kind of returns, it should easily be able to handle a full day of emailing, sketching, web browsing, even the occasional bit of YouTube if you absolutely must again. And the last feature worth checking out on this Boogs Tab Ultra Tour is the 16 megapixel rear camera, which as you can see there, is designed primarily for scanning documents. To use this, just tap the Scan Documents app, and this will automatically start up that camera. Once you've taken your shot, you can then edit the image, then hit Next Step, where you've got a small selection of options, including creating a note out of it or a PDF. And there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a lovely little nutshell, is the Onyx Boogs tab ultra as certainly that never gets boring that's for damn sure quite a nifty little e-ink tablet overall but pretty pricey as well so what do you reckon is it worth that sky high cost especially if you want the likes of the keyboard dock chucked in there as well let me know what you think down in the comments below please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week cheers everyone love you